All right. In this video, we are going to be going over how to make a shield. Uh, the shields that we are going to be making are going to be legal at both Ophednair Freestyle Sword Fighting Club as well as Medieval Chaos, which is a LARP in Duncan, Vancouver Island. Um, the, there are various materials that you can use to make a shield. Uh, the materials and the specifications for shields and weapons are all uh, laid out in the Medieval Chaos Handbook. These are the rules that both Ulfenner and Medieval Chaos use. This is what the handbook looks like. Uh, I just downloaded it. Uh, you can go to www.medievalchaos.ca and you go to the game info section. You can download uh, the player's handbook and in the handbook it is in the uh, combat and equipment section. Uh, the shields that we're going to be making today are going to be made out of Templast, uh, also called Coroplast. This is an example here. Uh, it is a plastic type material that is corrugated uh, just like cardboard. Uh, you can pick up a sheet from Home Depot uh, about four feet by eight feet that costs around $20. Uh, you can also find this material around the community such as uh, signs or real estate signs but just don't go out and steal them. Make sure that you do get uh, people's permission uh, to get those. Um, so first off, you need to think of what type of shield you want to make. Now, I only make two types of shields. I make shields that have a handle as well as a strap that fits like so, like that. And I also make center ball shields like this, so that you have the handle which is down the center and you have the shield like so. So those are the only two that I know how to make. Uh, the shield that we are going to be making today is going to be uh, one that has a handle and a strap. So you have to figure out what type of shield you want. Uh, once you figure out the type, you have to know uh, the shape of the shield that you want. And of course there are a bunch of different shapes for shields. Uh, here are just some examples. Here's a, a type of a kite shield. Uh, we have round shields. And we also have, this is an example of like a teardrop shape shield that is also a center boss shield. So if you go onto the internet, you will find a whole whack load of variations of different uh, shapes of shields. Uh, and you also have to figure out what size you want. Now, once you find uh, the type of shield that you want, uh, trace out a pattern first. I highly recommend it. Um, my friend asked me to make him a 20 inch round shield that has a handle and a strap. So I uh, created a pattern which is uh, he wanted 20 inches. So this is an 18 inch circle because I am going to be putting uh, one inch padding on all sides. So it's going to add two inches. So that will make me my 20 inch uh, pattern. So what you do is uh, you grab your material. This is the, the template that I'm going to use. You lay it out. Now, the specifications, uh, according to the Medieval Chaos Handbook, is that the Templast has to be three layers that is called cross-grain. Um, cross so if you look at the chloroplast, I don't know if you can see it on the camera here, but uh, the corrugations go in one direction. So these ones are going up and down this way. So you have to have it cross-grained. Uh, that way it gives the shield uh, a lot of stability because if you just have it in one direction it's just going to fold and bend just like that so you have to have one going uh, vertical you have to have another one the second layer is going to go horizontal and the third one is going to go back to being horizontal that way you have the three layers cross-grained um, and that's going to make the shield nice and strong so when you get your pattern you do want to lie down now if you're going to be using a specific um, shape, you have to trace it out, one going with the serrations going uh, one direction, and then you have to do your second one in a different direction, so that makes sure that the grains are going the opposite way, and then your third trace out again can be in the other direction. So luckily for me today, uh, my friend wanted a round shield, so I'm going to trace out my uh, round shield onto the Templast, and then I'm just going to take an exacto knife and cut out the shape.
Okay, so I have now cut out my three layers. Uh, now I gotta put them together. Now as I was cutting this out, I noticed that I do have enough material to make a second shield. So the one that I'm gonna first go over is uh, a shield that has a handle and a strap. And at the end of the video, uh, I will go over how to make a center boss shield. So now that I got my three uh, layers, uh, I have to glue them together. So I use uh, Gorilla Glue. Um, so I put some Gorilla Glue already on two layers. So the first layer, remember these ones have to be, uh, the, the grains have to be crossed. So right now this one here, the grains are going in this direction. Uh, so in order for Gorilla Glue to work, you have to wet the surface. So I'm going to wet this surface here with just a wet cloth. I put just a thin layer of Gorilla Glue on. So my, uh, my uh, corrugations are going this way. So I'm going to layer this one so that the corrugations are now going in this direction. So they are cross grained. I'm going to add another little bit of water on here. And then I'm going to take my other layer, and now that the grains are going up and down on this one, I'm now going to do it sideways on this one. So now they're going this, so they are cross-grain. Now it usually takes about one to two hours for this to set up, but it's always good to leave it for, it's a, the bottle says 24 hours, but usually overnight is good. So I'm just going to add a board on top of this, and I'm going to add a little bit of pressure and I will leave it overnight. All right, so our shield is now glued. Um, I cannot bend this. Uh, I cannot pry it apart. This is uh, well glued. So the next step is to apply the handle. Uh, the handle that I use is what's called a door pull. This one is seven and three quarter inches. Uh, I picked this up at Canadian Tire for around uh, $8. Uh, the reason why I like this handle, it has a really good grip, it's nice and big so I can put my hand around it. Uh, I highly recommend this one. Uh, you're also going to need uh, quarter inch carriage bolts. So this is a carriage bolt here. Um, it doesn't really matter about the length, but a quarter inch seems to be the perfect size. You're also going to need four washers. Uh, that's to go over the carriage bolts like so. And you'll need four of uh, the nuts to go with the bolts. Uh, as well. So that's four of each. Now the reason why we want carriage bolts and no other bolt is that when you have this shield, uh, the carriage bolt is nice and smooth and it's nice and flush with your shield and it doesn't catch anything. Uh, if you use any other type of head, it's going to have sharp angles which will scratch people, hurt people. So only bolt that you can use is a carriage bolt just because as I mentioned it's nice and smooth and it won't hurt anybody. So when it comes to the placement of the handle, I'm going to talk about kite shields first. So here's an example of a kite shield. The placement of the handle, uh, how it works with the kite shield is you find the corner that you're going to be working off of. So for me, this is the corner that I'm going to be working off of, like so. I'm going to grab that corner, just like so, I'm going to let it dangle. I usually also take a piece of string with a weight and I just drop it down. That will give me the gravity of kind of the line that I want to use. So I'll drop it down and I'll find that line. And that's going to be the center line of where my handle is going to go. In regards to the height of where my handle is, uh, I'm going to hold my arm of where I'm going to hold my shield. And I want this at corner to be kind of flush with my nose. That's, I don't want it too high so I can't see around it and I don't want it so low that it is uh, not protecting anything. So you just want to kind of be at the bridge of your nose. And that's where handle placement is for kite shields. When it comes to round shields, it all depends on how you want to use your shield. Uh, for example, if you're going to be doing a lot of digging with your shield, you want to have your handle maybe a little bit further back to give you a little bit more space to dig. Uh, also dependent on where you want to cover. So if you want to cover a little bit more lower, you might want to have it higher. Or if you want to cover higher, you put your hand a little bit lower. Um, for my friend, uh, he wanted it dead center. So I did kind of find the center line, the center point, And we're going to be working right off the center of that. So uh, I'm going to take my handle out. I'm going to, he said that he wants it mainly to just protect his form. So I'm going to put, hopefully his form is the same as mine. I'm going to put my elbow right on the edge, 
and my hand here. Now you want to have the handle fit right on kind of the fleshy part of your palm. So you just lay your arm down, dead center. I'm going to put the handle right where uh, I'm going to be holding it, pretty much right there. I'm going to center it a little bit, and that's pretty much where it's going to be. I'm now going to trace out the rectangular edges of it, like so. And I'm also going to mark where the holes are going to be. Like that. So you can see there where my handles are going to be. I'm now going to take this to the drill press. Remember, always remember safety, so gloves, eyeglasses, uh, kids, let your parents do this or make sure you have parental guidance. Uh, the drill bit that I'm going to use is just a little bit bigger than a quarter inch, that's so that the bolts will just slide right through, but you don't want it big enough so that the head doesn't go through. So I have that all loaded, I'm going to drill my four holes. take the nut and I'm going to tighten it down. Uh, when you tighten it, you don't want to do it too tight uh, that it's actually going into the shield. You just want to have it tightened up just so it kind of just bends into the shield, but you don't want to have it super, super tight or else uh, you'll start wrecking your shield. Now, one other thing I'm going to mention is that you can put the handle right on the shield like so. That's if you're just going to be using a bare hand or just a small thin glove. That will make your hand fit really nicely, but if you are going to use a large glove, which I recommend, for example, I use a uh, lacrosse glove, um, if you just use it this way, it's going to be very, very tight. So what you might have to do, which I did with this shield, is that I did put some wood spacers in between the templates and the handle. That's just to bump it up a little bit to give me some space for my glove. So all what I did was I just found a piece of wood, I traced out that rectangular portion of uh, the handle. I drilled uh, two holes and I also took this to the grinder and I ground down all the edges so it's all smooth all the way around. And I just made that a spacer, again, just so that you can have uh, a big glove on underneath and it fits. I did talk to my friend who I'm making this one for. He said he is not using a glove, so I'm just gonna attach it right to the shield like so. So I have now attached my handle. I did tighten it just enough so that it just starts to dent in there. That's as far as you need to go, but that's pretty solid. And this is where my hand, my shield is gonna be sitting. So now what I gotta do is I gotta cut off this access part of the bolt. In order to do that, I need to get my Dremel with a metal cutter on it. Now this is slightly dangerous. So again, let your parents do this kids, or uh, if you're gonna be doing this, make sure you wear gloves as well as eye protection. Uh, you have to know where your sparks are going to be going because this is going to be sparking up. Mine are going to be hitting this wall right here. And also remember that uh, the friction from the cutter is really going to be heating up the bolt. So watch where the bolt goes uh, and make sure not to touch that bolt, okay? So my handle is now fully attached. I have uh, cut down my bolts. I know where my shield is gonna be going. The next part is to put the strap on. So what I generally use is a regular belt. I picked this one up at a thrift store for a dollar. Uh, if you can try to find one that is genuine leather, they do seem to be a little bit stronger. This one is not, but it doesn't really make a difference because uh, there's not a lot of force on that strap that's on your arm. But if you can, try to find a nice leather one. So what we're gonna be doing is uh, you put your hand where your 
handle is. Now, in the placement of the strap, you don't want it too far forward to your wrist because it'll make it pointless and your elbow will still uh, lift off. And you don't want it too far back because then the buckle could be getting into your elbow and that would just be uncomfortable. So where you want it is just about during a nice thick piece of your forearm, just about there. Now I do like to have the buckle on top. Uh, that's just my preference. I find it easier for me to buckle in and out of um, the shield, but you could have it so it's off to the side if you want or the other way, it's really up to you. Um, so what you do is you just measure it off, just like so. I think that's a good spot. Uh, I'm now going to take my arm off and I'm going to draw a line where it's pretty much going to live. Now where my holes are going to go, uh, again I want to just, I don't want to have those holes where the washes are going to be and the nuts are going to be like right underneath my arm. I want it a bit far off so I'm going to have it right about here. So I'm just going to kind of landmark it, just eyeball it a little bit. And I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to measure where that is. That's pretty much right at exactly three inches. So I'm going to put a hole here and I'm going to go three inches. I have my center line drawn and I'm going to just line it all up and I'm going to do three inches from there. That's just so that when my bolts come on the other side that they actually look that they're pretty centered. So I'm going to drill a hole here. I'm going to drill a hole here. I'll match up those holes with my strap and I'm going to use the same uh, bolting technique as with the handle, so I have two more uh, carriage bolts with washers uh, and nuts, but also I'm going to need is a few, two washers that are just a little bit bigger. Those are going to sit on the strap, because if it was just the nut on the strap, you could just pull that right through. So I do want to have a washer to kind of uh, distribute the pressure a little bit more. So I'm going to go and drill those holes and I will attach it. All right, so the strap has been applied. Uh, I put the bolt through, I attached the nut with the large washer, as you can see, and I've also cut the bolt off. So now what I have to do is I have to put some padding on, this, uh, on the nut side here, just because uh, this, for uh, the person wearing this shield, this could cut you, uh, this could snag onto things, and it is quite uncomfortable. So we do have to put some padding on uh, the nuts on this side. So I've already started with these, all you do is you take a little bit of padding and you put some double-sided carpet tape onto it and you just place it over the nut like so. And you grab some filament tape is what I use and you just apply that over just to give it a little bit of extra security like so. And now this is all padded, nicely not going to go anywhere, and that is protected for me. So, uh, the strap is already put on. Uh, I have shortened it just a little bit, and I put some extra holes in it. And just to test it out, I can put my arm through. That's all sitting nice. Uh, you can see that the uh, bolts are nice and flush here, and it's not catching on to anything. And this is a, a good handle so far, complete. Now, the next step is to put some uh, padding on the edges of the shield. Um, now, there are many different ways to edge, uh, put padding on the edge. Uh, I tend to put a lot of padding on and a lot of tape on. Uh, the extra padding that I put on is just making it a little bit extra safe. And the extra tape that I put on does make the, the edging of the, the shield last longer. Uh, the edging that I'm going to show you, uh, I usually go through two full seasons of heavy uh, combat uh, before I have to re-edge my shield. So, um, the materials that you're going to need is uh, double-sided carpet tape. You can pick this up at any hardware store. Uh, I like to use filament tape. Uh, this I uh, had to order off of Amazon. Uh, this was around $11, and also I'll need some Gorilla Tape, which is what I like to use. And you're also going to need some Camp Mat. Now Camp Mat is what's called Closed Cell Foam, which is a requirement for Medieval Chaos. Uh, you can pick this up at any camping store. I got this one at uh, Home Hardware uh, for around $20, but this will last uh, a few shields. But you'll need these ones. Uh, to start off, uh, you're going to need to grab your double-sided carpet tape and what you want to do is you want to place this so that it is flush with the back of the shield 
and you're going to fold it towards the front like so and it can be it doesn't have to be anything great it can wrinkle up a little bit I'm going to do this in several pieces but I'm just going to work this around the edge remember flush with the back and folding it towards the front like so so the carpet tape has been put on and I'm just going to take off the remainder last little bit of it there now the reason why I use carpet tape, the double-sided stuff, is so that when I put the padding on it, it doesn't shift around on top of the tempest. It's a nice base for it. So now we're going to put on our first layer. Uh, the first layer we're going to do is right along the edge. Um, now the very, very edge of the shield right here is about half an inch. Uh, the three layers is about half an inch. So the padding that I'm going to do, I've made a strip of the closed cell phone. Uh, this is about three quarters, so it's a little bit bigger. The reason why is I want to place this onto the edge and I want it flush to the front of the shield, just like that. And I made it just a little bit bigger, just so that it overlaps on the back. The reason why I want it to overlap, that's gonna be some protection for me. Because if I would just have this right on the edge and I just move that foam just like a millimeter or so, then the edge of the Templast is showing. That way, if I do bash it into my face, uh, I'm actually going to be getting the, the edge of the tempest, which I don't want. So I'm going to put this foam right flush with the front so it overlaps on the back. Now I'm just going to move this all the way around. I'm probably going to need a, another piece, which I already have done. Just like so. piece and if you're putting two pieces together you want to squish it right up against it so that makes a nice complete so you don't have any gaps in between I'm going to work this all the way around again flush with the front like so and when I get up to this side I am going to cut the access off and then trim it so that it is no seams just like that okay so i have the edging all the way around now uh, this is flush to the front so the same thing as with the back if i do move that just a millimeter i have the edge there so i want to cover that so what i do is i make strips about two inch uh, wide strips and what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to make it flush to the top of the pattern that i just put on. So it's going to go just like this. And this is going to cover up the edge right there, but it's going to be flush right up at the top. So I'm going to move this all the way around. It should just stick to the carpet tape that I put on there originally. Like so. And I have another piece here. Again, when they meet, I'm going to squish it. All the way around, almost done. And I got just that perfect amount. And it's going to trim it off here a bit. Squish it in. Perfect. Just like that. Now, the requirements at Medieval Chaos is that the edging has to be half an inch or more. Um, this camp mat and any camp mat that I've ever bought is only three eighths thick. It is not the half an inch. Uh, so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to add another layer on top of this. That's gonna give me that more than half of an inch and I do like to have uh, a little bit of that added safety to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some more carpet tape. Uh, I'm gonna stick it right onto the edge uh, flush with the back of it, folding over the front, just like so. And again, I'm going to put some more padding next on top here, but I'm just going to work this all the way around, uh, and I'll show you the next part. In a little bit. So I've got the carpet tape all around the edge, folded to the front. Now I'm going to put on that second layer of padding so that I do get it over that half inch. So the distance between uh, 
the back and now the front here is just about an inch so I cut out strips just a little bit over the inch and I'm going to put that along the edge flush to the front. I did make this just a little bit uh, larger again so that it overlaps on the back again to give uh, the person who's wielding the shield a little bit more protection. So this is going to go all the way around. And again, flush to the front. Just like so. All right. From this point, now what a lot of people can do is they can go straight to putting the gorilla tape over it. Um, but what that does is, uh, if uh, the gorilla tape would split then you're going to be hitting right into the foam, which will mean that it'll just start to disintegrate. So what I like to do is I like to put another layer of tape. Now this is just optional, but the type of tape I like to use on the next layer is called filament tape. This is what filament tape is. I don't know if you get a good look at it, but it is clear tape that has uh, strands of fiberglass in it. Uh, this will make it super strong. I actually do two layers of this. So what I do is I stick it onto the Templast, I make it, try to touch the Templast as much as I can, like so. And then I put it right up against the foam and I bring it right over the back, like so. And I wrap it right around nice and tight so it's going all the way over. I'm gonna grab another piece of tape. I'm gonna match it and I'm gonna overlap it just a little bit Again, right on the templast as much as I can. Just bring it around and wrap it over. And I'm gonna do this all the way around the shield. Okay, so I have the filament tape put all around the shield. Now the filaments are going in this direction, which means it's gonna stop shots that are coming this way, which is very rare. So what I do is I'm gonna put a second layer on. The second layer is gonna go right across the top of it, just like so. I'm just gonna do it all the way around. And this is going to cross the filament threads. I don't know if you can see it there, but it's going to cross it. And that's going to stop shots that are coming from this angle, which is more likely what's going to happen. So this will make it very, very strong. Uh, the, the reason why I do this again is to make these shields last long. With this filament tape, it'll make the shield last probably a good two seasons of heavy combat before I have to re-edge the shield. So you just go all the way around. Now I forgot to mention that this filament tape, uh, it's hard to find. You usually find uh, one inch filament tape, which would just take forever to do. I did have to order this off of Amazon uh, for around $15. So you just go all the way around the edge, which is right about there. Now the next part is the final layer of tape which is Gorilla Tape. I do find Gorilla Tape works the best. Uh, you can use duct tape if you like, um, but I just find that the duct tape does split after time and you have to keep reinforcing it again and again and again. I just find that Gorilla Tape uh, is much stronger. I don't know if you can see it on the shield, but from the center point I measured about uh, six inches and I went all the way around the shield, so I have a marking here. That's where my Gorilla Tape is going to stick onto. Uh, this, uh, uh, it's gonna be right on this edge, work my way around. Uh, the reason why is that this final layer of Gorilla Tape is gonna be what people see. So you wanna make it look as good as you can. So I'm just gonna start it here. I'm gonna put it flat against the Templast as much as I can, then wrap it around. Um, try to make no creases. Um, because that's what people are going to see. So what I'm going to do is I just take the Gorilla Tape, I'm going to put it right on that marking that I had, I'm going to work my way up to the top, make sure it's nice and flat, go all the way around, and stick it to the Templast on the back. Now the next layer that I'm going to do is going to overlap it just a little bit. Make sure it's on the line so it looks good, like so, and I'm just going to overlap it just a little bit 
so that there's perfectly just like that. And I'm going to go all the way around the shield. So there you go. This is a finished shield. I got the uh, Gorilla Tape on. It looks good. Uh, the edges, I can compress the edges. They do come down. And uh, this is a finished shield. Um, so from this point, all that I do is probably just uh, put on some design. Uh, I, I'm probably going to cut out the tape here so the bolts actually show. I like the look of that. I probably would clean up the back of it, make sure that this blue doesn't show, but it's really just cleaning it up and making it look good. Maybe put a design on the front. Um, the nice thing about Templast is that it is super light. I weighed this at only three pounds. So this is a super light shield, but this is how it looks just like so. So that is how you make a shield. Uh, I am now going to go downstairs and I will show you guys how to put a handle uh, on a shield for a center boss. All right, so now that we've uh, completed the first shield, now I'm going to show you how to do a handle for a center boss shield. Things you're going to need to get, uh, I do have already my three layers of Templast already glued together and ready to go. I have done a lot of the work already just to make this go a little bit faster. Uh, you're going to have to buy yourself a bowl. So the bowl size needs to be big enough to fit your fist. Um, I bought this one at Home Hardware for around $5. Uh, you do want to spend a little bit of money to get yourself good metal, nice hard metal. If you cheap out and get really cheap metal, then it's going to, when it takes a hit, it's going to dent in, which could crush your hand. It could also make a lot of sharp edges uh, for your opponent. So you want to get a bowl that is nice and strong. Uh, you also need to have a good lip along the bowl. Uh, this is a good size here. Um, yeah, so you need that. You also need to get yourself a hockey stick. Uh, I've got one from the Nanaimo Recycling Exchange Center. Uh, this cost me a dollar. I've already cut mine. Uh, you're also going to need to get four bolts. Um, I still like to use uh, carriage bolts, but you can use bolts that have, as long as they have a rounded head to them, is fine. Uh, I still like to use them. Make sure that they are nice and long. These are three inch ones. The reason why is that they're going to go uh, through the hockey stick uh, along the long edge of that hockey stick. So you need to have it relatively long. You're also going to need to have four nuts to go with the bolts and also four washers. So the first step that you want to do is you want to take your Templast and you're going to find where your center point is. Now I had my, uh, my pattern already laid out so I knew where my center was. I marked it. I found where my bowl was and I marked the center of that and I just drew a circle so I knew where my center point was. So I drew a circle for my bowl. Once I did that, uh, I got my bowl and I found out where the center line was. You can either take your hockey stick, kind of eyeball where the center of it is, or you could take uh, a string, put a weight to it, and just weigh it down. You can find out where your center point is that way. But what you want to do is you want to drill two holes that are bigger than the bolts that you're going to be using. That's so that the bolts can go in and will stay nicely through that. So you're going to drill two holes through, the, through your bowl uh, in the lip of it there. Uh, once you get the holes drilled out, you're going to place it onto your Templast, mark where those holes are, and then you're going to drill two holes with the same drill bit uh, right through your Templast in those two spots. So once you do that, you get your hockey stick, or you actually take some bolts, you just stick them through those two holes. You take your hockey stick. Now when it comes to the hockey stick, uh, what I do is I don't want it to be going straight to the edge to edge. I want it uh, a bit off. So I went about two inches off of uh, the side of the shield. Um, so I cut it down. I did also take it to the grinder and ground down all the edges so it's all nice and round. So I'm going to mark off where my center point was on my stick and where the center point is on my shield. And it's going to match up where those bolts kind of come out. And I'm going to put some uh, markings onto my hockey stick. Those markings are where the holes are going to go. I also measured two inches from the ends on both sides uh, and I marked two spots where I'm going to drill holes there. Now the holes for the hockey stick are going to be going through the long part of the hockey stick, not the flat part, because you're going to hold your shield just like you hold a hockey stick, which is drawing the long way, not the flat way like that. All right, so you have your, ho your holes marked. I highly recommend using a drill press. Uh, that way when the drill bit goes through, it goes straight up and down. You can use a hand drill if you want, but you just have to make sure that you are dead center up and down because you don't want these 
holes going uh, off to the side anywhere. So a drill press is nice, but you drill your four holes where you marked off, hole, hole, hole. Now you have to put the, the two extra holes into your shield. So when you have your bolts going through your shield, you just match them up to the two holes, like so. Uh, take a long nail or a long screw, something that's sharp, and you just put it through the holes that you just made, and you're gonna poke a hole into the templast, over there and over there. That's just gonna mark where the holes are gonna go. You then take your handle off, you have where your two holes were just make, made, and then you take your drill and you drill two more holes. So you should have four holes going through your shield. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw uh, where the lip of the bowl is going to sit. This is what I'm gonna cut out, is right along the center. That's, uh, I measured it off and I just went around. So this I'm gonna cut out and then I'm going to assemble the shield and I'll show you what it looks like in just a moment. So I cut out the inner circle uh, where the hand is gonna go. I did also assemble the handle. So I have uh, the bolts going through. I did add some washers uh, to the bolts that are gonna be right against the templast. Uh, so the bolts are going through uh, the bowl, going out through the templast, through the holes in the handle. I did put some small washers uh, right up against uh, the handle and the nuts on top. So from this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the bolts just like I did with the previous shield. I'm going to add some padding to the top of the nuts there to protect myself. Um, and then I'm going to edge the shield just like I did with the previous video. So that's uh, a center boss handle. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please join our Ulfednair YouTube channel because we are going to be doing some future videos on some other crafting uh, videos as well as some training videos and also come and visit our Ulfednair Facebook page. Hope you enjoyed it. Happy fighting!